Hi everyone, it's Tasman here from Tasman's Crochet Creations and in today's tutorial we'll be taking what we learned in part one which was how to make the dogwood flower motif and turn it into a lacy top. I am actually wearing it right now um, but yeah so in the second part which is this video I'll be showing you how to put all of those motifs together to make this beautiful lacy top that I'm wearing right here. And this video is also sponsored by Kyle Foot. More of them later. Now let's get started with the rest of the video. Hey everyone, this is Tasman here from Tasman's Crochet Creations. And this is part two on how to crochet the dogwood motif top. Yeah, so this is part two on how to make the dogwood motif top. Um, if you want to go back to part one where we learn how to make the dogwood motif itself, um, I'll link that down below. And um, yeah, so we'll be making, <laughs> we'll be using this dogwood motif and we'll be making quite a few of them and we'll be turning it into a top. So let's get started with the material. So as for the materials, as I mentioned before, we are using the Kismet Risa 100% pure cotton and it's a 50 gram ball and it equals 100 meters. It's 100% pure cotton, it recommends a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, but for the purpose of this top, we will be using um, a 2 millimeter crochet hook. Okay. And we'll also be needing a darning needle and a pair of scissors as well okay so let's get started with the actual tutorial okay so as i said before at the beginning of the video in order to make the dogwood motif top you would have to start with one dogwood motif um, to begin with and as i said the tutorial on how to make the dogwood motif from start to finish from round one to round three is in part one um, i will go over again just the first two parts um, in this video and I'll show you how to join your second motif to the first motif that you did. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to move the little flower to the side and what we're going to do is we're going to start with a magic ring. So you'd want to take your yarn, wrap it around your, your two fingers to form an X like that and then insert under the first loop, pick up the second loop Pick up your tail end and your working yarn and pull that tight. Okay. So now you'd want to chain five. Okay, so you'd want to chain five. So chain five is or to chain is yarn over. Whoopsie. Yarn over, pull through, that's one. Yarn over, pull through two. Sorry, yarn over, pull through, that's two chains. Yarn over, pull through, that's three. Yarn over, pull through, that's four. Yarn over, pull through, and that's five. And then you'll insert into the first chain that you that in the first stitch that you did, and we'll do a slip stitch by yarning over and pulling through those two loops to do a slip stitch. Okay, I'm gonna run through this quite quickly because there is part one available for you to um, to do the dogwood motif. Okay, so we're going to chain. Um, we're gonna chain three one two and three and we're going to do four double crochets into this chain five space so double crochets yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two that's four one more the chain Three at the beginning counts as a stitch so essentially we have one two three four and five okay and then for the corner we'll chain four one two three and four and then we will do another five double crochets so that's one two three four, five, chain four, one, two, three, and four, 
and then five double crochets one two three four five chain four one two three four and then your last five double crochets yeah so that's one two three four five okay and then we're going to chain four again for the last corner so it's one two three and four and then slip stitch at the top of the chain at the chain there okay so slip stitch okay so that's what the first round should be looking like now and if you've worked over your tail end like what i did then you can just pull on your tail end a bit and it will pull the center closed just a little bit more like that okay So moving on to the second round, we are going to chain three. Again, it counts as a stitch. And then we're going to be doing four double crochets together over the next four stitches. So it's yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, stop there. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Again, it's yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook. Chain seven. One, two, three, four. Oopsie, four. Let me count that again. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven. Let me count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we are going to single crochet into the corner so we're going to yarn we're going to insert yarn over pull through we'll have two loops on a hook yarn over pull through two chain seven one two three four five six and seven Yep. and then again we're going to do five double crochets together so we're going to yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over insert into the next stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over insert into the next stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook chain seven one two three four five six and seven single crochet into the corner okay so it's insert yarn over pull through we'll have two loops on a hook and you'll just repeat that all the way back round to the beginning again and then meet back up with you when you're ready to move on to the third round okay so now i'm back round to the beginning and i just finished doing my chain seven and now i'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning um chain all the top of the five double crochets together here so just do a slip stitch so that's what the second round should be looking like now so now to move on to the third round, we're just going to chain one for leverage and then insert into the chain seven, uh, chain seven space and then do nine single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and then in this next stitch we're going to place one single crochet and we're going to place four single crochets so that's one two three and four and then what you would want to do to join this motif to your first motif we are going to put 
the wrong sides together. We're going to put the wrong sides together like this. We're going to count back four stitches, one, two, three, four. And then in the fifth stitch, we will slip stitch there. So count back. Okay, let's count from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. And then the fifth stitch will slip stitch into there. Okay, so slip stitch and then continue crocheting the rest of your nine nine single crochet so we've done four already the slip stitch counts as a stitch so that's five five six seven eight nine ten okay so now our first motif is attached to the one that we're working on now and then we can just continue placing nine single crochets into each chain seven space And then we'll slip stitch to the beginning stitch when we have reached the end or the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count. Sorry, I think I did eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you need to do one more. Okay, do nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so you'll just repeat this, placing nine single crochets into each stitch around until you get back around to the beginning and then I'll show you how to end off okay okay so now once you've made it back around to the beginning you just want to slip stitch to the first stitch so this one here yarn over pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook to do a slip stitch okay and then we can take our scissors and snip our yarn and then yarn over and pull that through. Yeah, and this is what it should be looking like with just two motifs. Um, so you will just repeat that. You just repeat rounds one to two, and then on round three, you will join your sec your third motif in the same way. So you'll join it to the opposite end of this one. Okay. So I'm going to go off and I am going to uh, to do rounds one and two and I'll come back when we are ready to join the third motif to the second motif. So now I have just made it round to the end of the second round of my third motif and now I'm ready to join it to my existing two motifs. So what I'm going to do is again I'm just going to do nine single crochets into the first chain seven space. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, again into the next chain space. Now we're getting ready to join this one onto this motif here. So we are going to chain, we're, sorry, we're going to do four single crochets into the next chain space. So that's one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then you would pick up your other motifs with the wrong sides facing each other. See the bumpy side and the smooth side. So with the bumpy sides facing each other, so you'd want to find the exact opposite um of where this is joined so to be to here okay so let me just double check that okay so you'd want to join here so pick it up count back four stitches one two three four and then in the fifth stitch 
is where we will slip stitch yeah so let's come back one two three four fifth stitch over here and then we'll we'll slip stitch and then finish off your four single crochets so that's one two three four okay so now it is joined as you can see there it is now joined and then we'll just continue placing nine single crochets into each of the chain seven spaces okay and then you will slip stitch to the beginning again and end off and you'll basically repeat the same thing of of uh crocheting the first two rounds so this round and then the decrease round or the the five double crochets together with the chain sevens and then your third round you will come back and you will you will then join um your existing one to your current to your to your like chains of <laughs> of motifs um or your length of motifs until until this um until this fits around your bust area because your bust is the biggest part of your upper body so this this length of motifs needs to be big enough to wrap around um to wrap around your bust area okay so you can go off and repeat that in the same exact way and then i'll show you how to do the second row of motifs where we actually no i'll first show you how to join the strip of motif motifs together so it will essentially be joined like that obviously it'll be longer um so I'll show you how to join your strip of motifs together to form like a, like a circle like this, not like a circle, but <laughs> um, you know, so it'll be connected. And then from there, I will show you um, how to join motifs in between two motifs like this. Okay, so you can go off and continue crocheting the amount of motifs you need for this to wrap around your bust area. So now I've come back and I have crocheted um, a length of motifs that can wrap around my bust area. I'm still busy with my last motif. Um, so I have done 11 motifs in total and it wraps around my bust um, comfortably. It's not too tight nor is it not too loose. And um, so yeah, I've just attached my last one. But now seeing that this is my last motif that i'm joining i also need to not just uh, not just join it to the existing motifs but i need to join this to the other side or to my my to the beginning of my motif so what i have done is i have already joined these two here as you can see i have already joined here so as you can see in between where the joins are we have three three as uh, three sections of the chain seven spaces as you can see three spaces one two three and then we have the join so we need to make sure we have three spaces one two three and then when we're in the middle of this fourth one then we join to the beginning okay so i'm just gonna continue placing nine single crochets until i am at that fourth space one two three and four so yeah that's one two three four five six seven eight nine and then again that's one two three four five oops let me do that again four five six seven eight nine okay so as you can see we have one two three spaces then in this next space we need to do four single crochets into this next space so that's one two 
three and four okay so now i am ready to join my last motif back up to the beginning so what you want to do is just grab um grab your beginning beginning motif and you'd want to put the wrong sides together so you just want to flip the motifs around so that they are not twisted in any way and that they are all facing the right direction okay so we're going to bring the wrong sides together okay so we're going to bring the wrong sides together let me just grab my working yarn here okay so now I have my beginning motif and my end motif here. So from the join on this one, we're going to count three, one, two, three. And then in this next one, we're going to count to the fifth stitch of this fourth one. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four. Sorry, it's one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, this middle one. Oops. Five and slip stitch in there and then now we need to finish crocheting this motif here so we're going to continue placing our four single crochets into the chain seven space we're working on so that's three and four and then in the remaining two chain seven spaces we will continue placing our nine single crochets into each of these two chain spaces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One more chain seven space. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight none okay and then again we'll just slip stitch to join in the beginning stitch okay so this beginning stitch here we are just going to slip stitch in there and then we can get our scissors oops and we can get our scissors and just snip our yarn <clears throat> yarn over and pull that through yeah so now it looks something like this now we have like a connected strip of motifs okay it's fine if at the moment they aren't sitting in the right direction when we join the second row of motifs um, we'll make sure to put them all in the right direction yeah, so this is what it should be looking like. Now it is all connected. Yeah. All right. So now we need to start working on the second row of motifs. And basically from the second row onwards, we'll just start building the top. So we'll just continue to add motifs to this um, to the one side and we're going to carry on adding motifs until um, until we get the desired length from a bust down then we will come back and we will continue working on the top of the bust area and we'll continue working like the top of the the top of the top <laughs> where we will leave leave a neck hole opening and little armhole openings on the side and stuff like that so so yeah um, I am now going to work up the next two rounds of the motifs and then I will come back for the third round and I'll show you how to join the motifs to the first row. Okay. Okay. So now I have made my first... Okay. So now I have come back and I have finished crocheting my first two rounds of the motif and now it is time to join it to um <clears throat> to our length of motifs here so and essentially what, what we're going to have is we will have like like the middle chain seven in the middle here and 
the other two chain sevens next to this one is going to connect to these two here so i'll just show you how to connect so we are going to uh, place four single crochets into the first chain one two three and four and then we are we are going to get our our motifs and we are going to join join it to the, mi the the middle of these two here so there's our join there's our four single crochets here there's our nine single crochets and we're going to slip stitch to the beginning of the nine or the end of or the end of this petal here so you just want to slip stitch and join this motif there and then you want to place four single crochets into this motif one two three and four okay and then we are going to count four and we're going to slip stitch to the middle of this petal here so we're going to count four one two so we're going to count five one two three four Actually, we're going to count five because we've already slipped stitched into the first one. So it's one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, and five. So this one here, I'm going to slip stitch into there. And then we're going to continue placing nine single crochets into this petal here. One, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six seven eight and nine okay <clears throat> so this is what it should be looking like now we just lay this out nicely so you can see okay so so as you can see the middle of or the the chain Sorry, the nine single crochets here is sitting in the middle of these two. And then we are going to join the end of this nine single crochet to the middle of this. Then we'll do four single crochets here and then connect the fifth one to the middle of this. So we're kind of doing the opposite. So, so where we are working on the middle on the on the motif we're joining, we are working into the beginning of the, the existing motif where we are ending on the on the joined motif or the joining motif um we are in working in the middle of the current motif if it makes any sense okay but let's continue with this so we have just finished our nine single crochets and then we are going to so we are going to slip stitch into the middle of this nine here so we have four here and then we need to count four on the next one yeah so it's one two three four sorry count five so it's one two three four and five so we'll slip stitch into the fifth stitch okay and then we'll do four single crochets into the next chain space one two three and four and then you'd slip stitch into the corner here okay so you'd slip stitch into the corner and then you would continue with your four single crochets one two three and four okay so now it should look something like this and now as you can see it has, it is joined there 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 and there so in four places <clears throat> so we've joined in the middle here and we have joined in the corner and then on the on the flower that we are or motif we are joining is the opposite so the middle is joining onto onto the, the end or the center there and the end of the stitch is joining onto the center of this one okay so now we can continue placing nine single crochets into the remaining chains across i mean around not across 
Yeah, so you're gonna place, you're gonna continue placing non-single crochets into each chain seven space around, and then you'll join to the beginning and and end off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, it's meant to be nine, seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, so you'll just continue placing nine single crochets into the remaining chain seven loops, slip stitch to the beginning and end off. And then I'll come back and then I'll show you how to join the next motif motif to, to this one, this one, and this one. And then from there it will basically be a repeat um, connecting the motifs. And then once we're done like kind of like joining motifs all the way around and when we come back to the beginning I will show you how to join the motif to this one, this one, this one and then there'll be another one here. So it will like literally go in the middle here. I'll show you how to connect that as well. Okay, so you can just go off and finish uh, placing nine single crochets into the remaining chains and you can work up the next two rounds for your next motif and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to join that one to these three existing motifs here. Okay. Okay, so now I have come back and I have made up my last motif. So I've made um, the first two rounds of my last motif and I'm going to join it here. So now this is my last motif that I need to join to this row and I'll show you how to do that now. So we will start by placing four single crochets into this uh, this chain space here. So it's one, two, three, whoops, three and four. Yeah, like that. And so we will place it here so if you see it will connect it there it will connect there 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 and there so we will pick up our our motifs so that the wrong sides are facing each other and from this join here there's four and then we'll count four or to the middle of this one here yeah so there's one, two, three, four, and five. Let me count that again. One, two, three, four, and five in there. So slip stitch. And then do your remaining four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we will slip stitch to this one. Actually, no, we won't slip stitch. We will go straight into the next one. Do one, sorry, one, two, three, four. Okay, so if you are not sure, you can just place it down and then you can see where, where we need to join So you can always use your other motifs as like your reference. Okay, so we will join to, we'll now join to this motif here. So not this one, this one. So we will skip, we will, we will skip this nine here. And then we'll place a single crochet, uh, slip stitch into here. And then do four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we will slip stitch to the middle of this petal here. 
So, whoopsie. So we'll slip stitch to there. Okay. So now that's it's joined it there now. So now we will place nine single crochets into the next loop. So that's one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. And then we will skip, so we, we not working into these uh, petals here, we will skip these four, and then count four on this middle one, so it's one, two, three, four, and then five. We'll slip stitch into the fifth one. So we'll slip stitch into the fifth one. And then place four single crochets into the next uh, loop. One, two, three, four. And then slip stitch to the middle here, to the beginning of the next petal. Slip stitch there. And then do four single crochets one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then so we will do another four into the next one, two, three, four, and then we will join. To the middle of this petal here. So it is one, two, three, four, and five into there. Slip stitch into there. And then you'll do your remaining four. And there we go, it should be joined like that now, as you can see. So now what you would do is just replace, or just place the remaining single crochets into each of the remaining three loops. Yeah. And then you'll basically repeat the same steps, um, the same way that we joined each of the motifs, you will, you will repeat that until you get the total number, uh, sorry, until you get to the total length that you want your top to be from, um, from your underarms down. Um, we will come back and we will work on the upper portion of the, of the, um, of the bodice or the, We will come back and we'll work the upper part of the top um, once we have finished working the, the length of the, the top. So yeah, we need to create um, armholes um, after we have finished with the length. So what we'll do is instead of doing continuous, doing a, a continuous uh, row all the way around at the top, we will we will leave about two motifs on either side of the of the of the top and we will just do um we will just do a few a few we'll do like about maybe five maybe do five motifs on either side and leave um and leave two, one on either end. But we will work that out when we get there. So for now, just continue joining your, your motifs like we have done before. And then I will come back and show you how to work the upper part of, of the top to form the sleeves. Well, not the sleeves, to form the, 
the, the neck hole opening and the arm hole opening and stuff like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So I'm just back at the beginning and I'm going to slip stitch to join. And then take my scissors and and cut. So there we go, we have another row of, um, we have another row of completed motifs, as you can see here. So as I said, what we'll do is we'll continue to, to make rows of motifs going down like this. So until your top is the desired length that you want from your armhole, not your armhole, from your underarm down to the length that you want it. And then we'll come back. So we'll, we'll work the length down this side. And then we'll come back. And um, we will then leave um, leave motifs on the side, on either side here. We'll leave an opening on either side so we can work in. Um, so we can do the, the nickel opening and the armholes. Um, yeah, the armholes so we will essentially do like one two three and four and then we'll leave that one and this one out the picture so we'll leave about two motifs and uh yeah that should be it should be fun okay so you can go off and do that and i'll come back and meet you up when we are ready to start working on the upper part of the top okay Okay, now, back to the sponsor of this video. Carlfoot is a local South African company who produces outwear products. Their most popular product is the foot kicks. They are like socks, but shoes. They are made from breathable fabric. They are comfortable, soft, non-slip, and used for sports. They come in various sizes and patterns. If you're, if you're not sure what size would fit you best, you can follow the measurement guidelines and the table on their website. They even come in top sizes for kids. They come in various patterns and sizes. Their microfiber towels are amazing. They have various patterns. They even have hoodie towels for kids. The microfiber towels are quick drying, lightweight and compact. It is also The rash vests are perfect for surfing. They are good quality, they are long lasting, they have UV protected fabric, flat locking stitching seams prevent chafing against the skin, they are quick drying, stretchy and lightweight and they fit close against the skin. Com and they give a comfy look and feel in and out of water. You can also return or exchange an item with a shipping fee of just 85 Rand. You can exchange for a different size or product. The refund policy states what can or cannot be returned. The shipping is also very quick and the service is just amazing. I wanted to exchange my foot kicks for a different size because the ones that I bought, they were a size 8 to 9 and I'm normally a size 9. Um, but I, I decided to exchange my foot kicks for size 6 to 7. Um, so I sent them, well, I logged for an exchange 
on their website and I had to um, I had selected the option that said um, what was it now <laughs> that said I, um, it has been used but I would like to exchange it so I clicked that option and I had to upload photos but I had uploaded an old photo that I took when I first got them um, just to show how 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 big they were around my heel um because it was like baggy around my heel when it's supposed to fit snugly like a sock um so yeah then i sent them an email after they sent me a confirmation about um about the return that i want to do and that and that my return will be checked and everything like that and um i replied on that email stating that that the foot kicks have uh, that the vinyl of the foot kicks have rubbed off and i told them that i would understand if the shoes could not be exchanged since they were damaged or the vinyl had come off so my thought process was that i couldn't return them because um because the product was basically damaged and it can't be resold so that was my thought process but to my surprise they replied and they were like oh my goodness um they were like we'll definitely still exchange it and everything like that and they were like thank you so much for letting us know and uh, yeah, um, I was say, uh, said on their website after I had finished uh, filling in the return form um, or the exchange form that I was going to be charged 85 rand shipping. Um, but then when they reviewed my email that I sent and my return, they sent me an email and um, I replied on their email and it didn't have any shipping added to it, like shipping fees. So I responded to the email and I was like, um, I'd just like to find out how much is the shipping fees. Is do I still have to pay 85 Rand? And they're like, oh no, don't worry about that. So because their product had a defect, because the vinyl came off, they are they sent me, well they're still going to send me a pair free of charge. I'm actually still waiting for them to receive it. I should be getting them today. It is now 20 past four in the afternoon and hopefully I should be receiving it soon. Um but yeah, Calfoot is is amazing. Their service is just great. I ordered my shoes on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock. And um, the next day, on Wednesday, I received an email to say that on Thursday I'll be getting the delivery. And I thought that since on their website it says that the shipping for the delivery normally takes three to five business days. So I thought I would get it on Friday, but to my surprise, I received it on Thursday, which I was really happy and chuffed about. And I love my foot kicks. They're so comfortable. They're so amazing. And um, I love my towel as well. My towel was just so cool. As I said, it's fast drying and it's, it's really, really awesome. But yeah. And uh, if you would like to get your own pair of foot kicks, rash vest, or even a microfiber towel, then click this link right here. And you can put in this coupon code and you can get 5% off your purchase. Okay, let's carry on with the rest of the video. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I am back after completing the seven rows of the vest. Um, so this is what it looks like so far. Um, now that I have seven rows of the vest complete. So you can see the flower motifs there. So now it is time to start working on dividing for the armholes. So what I've decided to do, um, so I've decided that for the back, um, for the back we are going to have five motifs. So one, two, three, four, five, five motifs for the back and four motifs for the front. So it's going to start from here, one, two, three, four, four motifs. Yeah, four motifs. And then the next row, it'll be three in the front and four in the back. And then we should be able to join um, the front to the back on the second round. Um, so yeah, that is kind of my thought process. Um, so yeah <laughs> so as i said we're going to be doing five in the back one two three four five and four in the front one two three four okay so let's do that now 
Okay, so I already have my one little motif worked up and I'm just going to start working my non single crochets into the first loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to do my four in the next one as well. So that's one. One, whoopsie, one, two, three, four. And now I'm ready to join to my work. So I'm just going to flip this back over here. So as I said, we're going to have four in the front. So it's one, one, two, three, four. So we're going to join here, over here. So we're going to join there. So as I said, I've already done my nine and my four. And I am going to join it to the middle of this motif here. So I'm going to pick this one up here. I'm going to count four. One, two, three, four. And in the fifth one, we're going to slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch. And then we're going to do the remaining four. One, two, three, and four. And then we will slip stitch to the end. And then we are going to place the non single crochets into the next loop three, four, five, six seven eight and nine okay i'm going to slip stitch not to this not to this uh center here we're going to join to the middle of the nine single crochets here so we count one two three four and five and we slip stitch in there and then we do our four single crochets into the next chain loop. One, two, three, four. And then slip stitch in the end of this one. And then complete your chain, your single crochet fours, your four single crochets, <laughs> three and four. Okay, so now we've joined and this is what it looks like okay so now we can finish off our motif and we can just place nine single crochets into the remaining uh, chain loops okay and then i will meet back up with you when we have um completed the four in the front and the five in the back and then i'll show you what it looks like from there okay okay so now i am back and i have finished the first row um so there's four on the front and five on the back leaving um one like one motif on either side um for the armholes so i tried this on and sadly i still need to do like two or three more rows than what i thought i needed to do um so i thought i just needed to do one more row and like one more row above on either side and this row um the next row would be where i join these two together um but yeah i don't know why i thought like that because because <laughs> uh that won't be the size of my arm of black my armhole opening um or well my arm should say like there um but yeah anyway so what i decided that we're going to do for for the upper part of the vest after the armholes or for the armhole section um so what i was thinking we do so for the front for instance we will do um we will do three 
uh, we will do three motifs so one two three over here and then I'm going to work up half of the motifs and put them on either side like that so it'll kind of form like a straight edge and I'll do the same for the other side um, so for the back let me just do this here so for the back um, I'm going to do one two three four and then again I'm going to make the half like motif things on either side here um, I'm still going to figure out how to do that um, but yeah, so that is my plan. So I'm thinking of doing another two more rows. Um, so in total it'll be three. And hopefully on the third row I will be able to join the one side of the motifs to the other side. Um, so yeah, this is kind of my plan. Um, so yeah, this is taking a little bit longer than what I anticipated. Um, but yeah, I did actually lose the footage. When I first started making this, I lost the footage. That's why, um, I don't know if you noticed, but in the beginning part of the video, I was kind of like rushing um, because I had to redo it and it was quite annoying to redo it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, so, um, so, yeah, um, this is definitely taking quite a while than what I anticipated. Um... But yeah, so let us continue with the top. Okay, so I have just completed all of the motifs at, for the front and the back. And I tried to like cut the motif in half basically. And I really, really did try to get it exactly half so I can kind of get this, this edge. Let me just do this here quickly. This edge like nice and straight but whatever I did whatever I tried okay so let me just pause this here real quickly um so I did in the end figure out how to do the half the half motif because no matter um how many times I try to fill in the gaps with the motifs they would just kind of flap about because it wasn't secured to anything so skip along to this time stamp where I'll show you how to do the motif the half motif and yeah I think two more rows to the front and to the back um yeah because when I tried this on um well tried to try it on <laughs> obviously because these aren't connected in any way they these just like fell like just folded over um so the front fits nicely um as I said, I still need to do like another one or two more rows for the front, but for the back, um, it looks like I need to do more because um, when I try and hold the, the the back part of it up against my back, um, it looks like it it's like shorter than the front, even though it's obviously the same amount of rows. Um, yeah, same same amount of rows of motifs for the front and for the back. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to do another two or three more rows of motifs. Um, just I'm going to just see how it looks on me and I suggest you do the same as you're working this up. Just keep putting it up against your body, seeing how it fits and um, what adjustments you need to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one motif here and one motif here in the front and I'm going to add another one on the side. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. And then I will show you what that will look like at the end. And I think I'll actually also show you how to uh, how to uh, crochet these motifs onto like these two existing ones, because depending where you're working from, um, if you're working on the left left hand side, so this side here, um, it's easier to to join. It's like how we've been joining. For all of the other times but with this one it's different um yeah it's different because normally we would join uh what's this clockwise we're joining clockwise but now we're joining anti-clockwise so we kind of have to do everything in the opposite way that we have been but i'll show you how to do that as well but for now i am going to do the two in the front one on either side here 
leaving two in the middle for the neck hole opening and for the back we will just fill in one two three four five and then two on either side I think okay but I will see how I go and I'll show you what both the front and the looks what the both the front and the back looks like after this row okay okay so I have come back and I have finished um, creating the neck hole opening for the front and also for the back I have done my five motifs at the back and now I am going to show you um, how to crochet um, the motif or how to join a new motif onto this um, left hand side here um, yeah so I'm going to show you that now okay so I have my motif here ready to join so I have just done my nine single crochets into the first three um, chain spaces and now um, at the end of my third um, uh, third chain space here I am going to slip stitch to the center of this one here so we are going to find the center so I count back one two three four five and slip stitch into there and then place four single crochets into the next chain space one two three four and then slip stitch to the end of this one on this motif and then you will finish off um, the nine single crochets placing four single crochets in the same chain space one two three four okay and then we will place another four single crochets into the next chain space so it's one two three four and then we will slip stitch to the middle of this one over here slip stitch to the middle one two three four and five slip stitch and then finish off your four single crochets one two three four and then finish off the motif placing nine single crochets into the remaining three uh, chain loops one two three four five six seven eight nine again one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine okay then we're gonna slip stitch to the beginning and end off okay so now that is what it looks like there this one's a little bit wonky um yeah so that's what it looks like and we'll do the same on this other side here um so we'll do the same on this side um but this side is easier because we'll be working like how we have been doing before um so yeah you will place two motifs this side like that I'm trying to get this thing in full frame here so there we go so you will place your two motifs side by side and then you'll place two motifs here and then with the back with the back we will leave this with it being five like that and then we will do another row um, we will do another row so 
we will do the back, we'll place one, two, three, four, and then we'll do five and six. So we will place um, four in the middle here, then we'll place the extra two on the other side. And then with this one, with the front, oopsie, dropped my hook. <laughs> and then on this side, we'll place one in the middle here, on either side, one in the middle. And then we will, we will place another one to the right of that. But I will show you um, what we will do um, for the next row because we will then join the front to the back now and um, yeah so I'm just going to finish crocheting up this motif and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do um, for the front but so long you can finish crocheting up this motif if you haven't done so already and um, you can finish off doing the six at the back um, is it six? One, two, three, four, yeah, five, six. Um, so you'll carry on doing your six and then I'll meet back up with you when we are ready to do the front and when we're ready to join the front to the back. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now I have come back and I have finished crocheting all six of the motifs for the back and I have finished crocheting the two for the front. Now what we are going to do, actually this was two from the front, two from the row before. Now what we're going to do is for the front, we are going to now join the front and the back together with one motif. So I know earlier I said we we're going to do one in the middle and then one on the outside. Um, but we're just going to do one, I think it will just look better. Um, so you have one instead of two because the second one will just overhang. Um, so I think it will just look a little bit funny. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is, so I have already made up my motif here. And what we're going to do is we are going to place um, nine single crochets into the first loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and then we are going to place four single crochets into the next chain space one two three four okay and now what we're going to do is to make this easier to joining for for joining we are going to rotate our garment towards us so that our work is to the top of us so what we're going to do so if I lay this out for you, so I'm just going to fold the back portion on top of the front um, or well towards the front. So what we're going to do is, okay, let's rotate this, this side actually. So now we are going, so now we are working with the, the top of the garment um, away from us and um, the back is towards the back obviously. Um, I just doubled up my garment here, so I just folded the um, the bottom of it underneath so that's easier for me to work with and to put on my table and whatever else. Okay, so what we're going to do is, so we've already um, done our nine single crochets here and our four into the next. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up, we are going to pick up um, these two here and we are going to join it to the center of this one to the in between this one we're going to join here okay so we are going to slip stitch over there so we're going to slip stitch finish off our four single crochets one two three four okay and then we will slip stitch to the middle of this one. Let me actually just zoom in a little bit here. Um, so we will slip stitch to the middle of this motif over here from the back. Um, so we'll slip stitch to the middle. One, two, three, four. Five is over there. So we'll slip stitch there. Okay, like that. And then we will place nine single crochets into the next 
a loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, and then we will slip stitch. So we'll grab our next motif for the back. Okay, for the back. And then we will slip stitch into the middle of this one here. Over here, we'll slip stitch to that one. So we'll pick up our work. And on this one, so we'll skip this four here. And then we'll skip four on this one. So it's one, two, three, four. Slip stitch into the fifth one. Slip stitch into there. And then into the next chain space, we'll do four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then we will slip stitch um, to the, the beginning or middle of this one. So in the middle of these two, we will slip stitch there. So we'll slip stitch there. We will complete our... Uh, four single crochets okay and then in the next chain space we'll do our nine single crochets into the next chain space so that's one two three four five six seven eight no. Okay. And now we are just going to rotate our work. Which way shall we rotate it? Okay, let's rotate it this way. Yeah, this way works. And then what are we going to do is um okay. So now moving on to the next chain space, we're gonna put four single crochets into there. One, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna slip stitch to the middle of these two here. So we have this uh, four single crochets, and we have nine and nine, and we're gonna slip stitch in between these two. You're gonna slip stitch there. And then you're gonna finish up your four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll slip stitch to the middle of this one. One, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to slip stitch in there. Okay. And then we're going to place nine single crochets into this next loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, and then we'll slip stitch onto this next one here. So we will slip stitch into the middle of this one. So we'll skip four here, skip four here. So it's one, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the middle. And then we will do our four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we will slip stitch into the middle here so we'll slip stitch there okay now that's connected there and then we just need to finish our four single crochets so that's one two three four and then slip stitch to the beginning and then we can snip our yarn okay so that's what it looks like now so now we just have one motif for the front like that so that's what it looks like and then the other side will also be joined exactly like that okay so that is it for the actual vest we just need to sew in our ends and i just need to make the other one um so yeah i'll come back and i'll show you um I'll come back and I'll show you how we are going to weave in our ends after I have finished crocheting this one on the side. Okay. Okay guys, so I am back and I have actually figured out a way on how to get the motif exactly half as you can see here. So now it leaves kind of a cleaner edge now 
it's a lot more like straighter um i'll show you this side actually because the side actually has a straight edge so as you can see there it now has a nice flush straight edge so now i'm going to show you how to do the half motif and how to join it and um yeah and then i'm also going to do the same for these top motifs over here um at the shoulder i'm going to take this one out i'm going to replace it with the half motif like how it did with this side over here like that okay so i'll just show you real quick how to um how to make the half motif so what you'd want to do is as normal you'd want to uh you'd want to chain five Okay, and then slip stitch to the beginning and then we are going to chain up five or six one two three four five and six and then we'll we will do four single crochets one sorry five single crochets uh, sorry five double crochets one two three oopsie okay so you've done one two three four and five and then we're going to chain four one two three and four and then we are going to Sorry, I just have a knot here in my yarn here. Don't know how this happened. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so chain four, and then we're going to do another five double crochets. so now it should look like that and then we're just gonna chain four just to get back down to the center and then we're gonna slip stitch to the center we're gonna slip stitch and then we're gonna slip stitch up the side of the chain here and then we can a single crochet into the corner and we can do our chain seven one two three four five six seven and then do your five double crochets together over the next five double crochets so that's one two three four and five and then yarn over and pull through all of those five then chain seven again one two three four five six and seven and then single crochet into the next chain four space chain seven one two three four five six and seven and then do your five double crochets together over the next five double crochets so that's one two three four five and then yarn over and pull all of that through and then we are just going to so we need to have a total of three chain seven loops which we have here so now what we can do is we can just slip stitch down the side of the motif oops so we can just neatly just slip stitch down the side so we can get back up to the side
And then after we have slip stitched to the chain seven space, we are then going to grab um, where we want to join our, our motif. So I'm just going to flip it this way because um, I still have a whoopsie. Because I still have a motif that I need to join on this side. Okay, so I'll try and set this out nicely. Okay, so I have my half of my motif here and I should have three chain seven spaces and this is where we're going to connect to here, to these set of motifs over here. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, after we have slip stitched up the side, we are now going to slip stitch to the middle of this motif. So here's the nine that we will skip on this one here, we will slip stitch to the middle of this motif. So, um, to the middle of this petal. So we're going to pick that up and then we will slip stitch in the middle. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we will continue with our four single crochets into this chain seven space. One, two, three, four. And then we'll slip stitch to the end of this one. So we'll slip stitch there. And then we'll place uh, four single crochets in that chain seven space that we just worked into. One, two, three, four. And then we'll do four single crochets into this next chain seven space. And then we'll slip stitch to the center of this one. So we'll slip stitch to this one. Okay, so find the fifth one and slip stitch there and then do your four single crochets and then do four single crochets into the next uh, chain seven loop okay and then slip stitch to the middle of this one here so we're going to slip stitch to this middle petal here. So we will slip stitch there. And then we will finish up our four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we will slip stitch to the middle of this petal. So it's one, two, three, four. And then find the fifth one and slip stitch. And then what I like to do is I just like to single crochet into the next stitch of the center motif. Okay, so yeah, so I'm just now single crocheted into um, the last stitch of the, the motif here. And then I'm just going to end off as normal. Okay, so there we go. That is our half motif now finished so now as you can see it gives it a lot more um finished look okay so i'm going to do that for the the four places that i said i was going to put another motif um so yeah i have actually already done that as i have already shown you um so yeah, the only thing that's left for me to do now is just to undo this other motif here on the shoulder and put in a half one. Um, so yeah, you can do that now too. And um, yeah, and then we can sew in our ends. Okay, so I'll come back up with you and I'll show you how to sew in our ends. Okay, so now I am back. I am finished with the motif and now it's time to start sewing in all of our ends so what we're going to do is we're just going to take one of our ends here and just thread it onto our darning needle i'm using a darning needle with the small r just to make it easier to weave it through those ends i mean through the stitches so what we're going to do is we're just going to go under the single crochet stitches so we're just going to go under all of those stitches 
Okay, don't pull your tail in too hard because then you'll distort the stitches. Okay, so you're just going to thread your tail end in through the single crochet stitches. And if you want, you can skip a stitch and go back in the same direction you came, just so that you can secure your tail end even more, so it doesn't come loose or undone. Okay. And then you'll just continue to sew your tail end. back the way you came. So once you've sewn that in, you can just take your scissors and you can snip your yarn. And also, um, with the, I'm just going to flip this inside out quickly. Okay. And then all of these tail ends at the back, um, that goes through the center, if you have not um, crocheted over your tail end, that is fine. You can just take your darning needle. You can just take your darning needle. Oops, there we go. And you can just feed the, that through the stitches the same way uh, we did with the single crochet stitches. Just weaving your tail end. In between those stitches like that until it's nice and secure and then you can take your scissors and snip off your tail end okay, and there you go that is how you sew in your tail ends and um, you can go off and do that and I'll do mine as well and then I'll come back and I will show you the finished piece Yes, I am back and I have finished uh, sewing in all of my ends and doesn't that just look so neat and tidy? Doesn't it just look beautiful? Okay, so what I have done is I have actually put the half um, the half motifs on the side here as well because um, these ones were just like flapping about because they weren't secured. And then I also decided to put um, half ones over here but these ones are started a bit differently. So the center is basically the same, but instead of slip stitching um, the first stitch to the middle of this one, um, you would have done four first and then slip stitch to the middle of these two petals and then carried on um, like that. Um, it's just because this section here, as you can see, is different from this section here. So with this one, uh, this petal connected to this one, but with this one, um, these two side petals connected to these two. So they, it's just a matter of just either slip stitching, um, either slip stitching this to the motif or single crocheting four and then slip stitching to the next motif. Okay, so I did two in the front and I also did uh, three at the back. Because I noticed when I had put this on that these three motifs at the back were kind of like 
stick up like this on my back it would like arch up and um, it didn't really look really nice so I just decided to do uh, three more motifs in the middle of these three here just so that it's it kind of like lays more flat and again as I said I have put four of the half motifs on the back as well as you can see there um so yeah that is about it i also steam blocked this so i i had hung it up on a hanger and i had steam blocked this so that um so that the stitches relax and and it lays flat um so yeah this is what it looks like i think it looks really really gorgeous um it's really really stunning i love this so you can wear this with maybe like a mesh colored bra or a tank top underneath or or a swim uh, a bikini top and you can put this as a pullover if you're going to the beach or something um so yeah i will now show you what it looks like on me and uh, yeah but that's it guys thank you guys for watching um please wait till the end of the video to see the end results and uh, yeah thank you guys for watching and enjoy the rest of your crocheting Okay, so you can see me wearing my foot kicks along with the lacy dogwood top. Um, so yeah, please don't forget to check out the link below and use the coupon code um, to get 5% off your purchase. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy the rest of your crocheting.